Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne. This is Wilms Front. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Despite some recent coronavirus cluster outbreaks, Australia on the whole has contained this pandemic with our daily infection curve still flat. Friday's National Cabinet meeting will decide which social restrictions will be lifted and how. Uh, the economic recovery phase is now the main point of discussion, uh, but given uh, that the human and economic destruction the coronavirus has unleashed around the globe was a virus uh, born in China, our biggest trading partner, a fascist, totalitarian, bullying regime, we need to rebuild our economy ourselves and not risk another economic cat catastrophe again by taking the easy way to back to prosperity by just reverting to our previous reliance on China. Australia has been self-sufficient in the past. What has crippled this is government regulation and control of our farmlands and water supply. Our farmers have tamed this uh, rough land of Australia for over 200 years and fed us uh, throughout our history and they can do it again if they're allowed to take back their property rights in full. An organisation that has been advocating for farmers' property rights and against environmental and globalist farmland and water regulation since 2011 is Flag Australia, which stands for Food Producers Land Owners Action Group Australia. The founder and director, Peter Manuel, is my first guest on tonight's Wilms Front double feature. Uh, Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Tim G. Uh, your uh, introduction was brilliant. Totally agree with everything. When uh, the it was clear that uh, the, the the pandemic was going to to hit uh, Australia, uh, we we saw uh, the Australian uh, people because they'd had it good for so long they 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 didn't know how to react and the the first response was the the panic buying uh, which began with with toilet paper and then moved on to other uh, food staple uh, foods we were told not to panic and relax because all our toilet paper is manufactured locally and we have and we have enough food to feed three australias but how can we be relaxed when we're in a man-made drought due to the bureaucratic control over the Murray-Darling Basin? We have more manufacturing continuing to go overseas and more of our farmlands are approved for sale uh, by our government's Foreign Investment uh, Review Board to uh, Communist uh, Chinese Party front uh, companies. I certainly don't feel assured and, and relaxed. Neither you should, Tim. Neither you should. You've got some very good points you've uh, brought up there. Um, in regards to uh, uh, the Communist Chinese Party buying up our agricultural land, and I, and I must admit here, there are some very, very decent Chinese people, and they don't like uh, what's happening either. And uh, But in regards to the Chinese Communist Party, um, China now owns 14.5 million hectares of our food producing land. They are now the biggest purchaser of our water rights. Now, really think about that one, water rights. This happened back uh, in the Howard government when Malcolm Turnbull was Minister for Water and he allegedly separated water from land. One of the most treasonous acts that's ever been put on the people of Australia. So that means that, you know, it's all about money, money, money. Uh, over $50 billion worth of our water rights have been sold overseas government investors and corporations. And this is absolute lunacy. So where did they get this water from originally? Well, I'll tell you where they got it. They stole it from the mum and dad farmers of Australia. That's what they did. And these politicians that own water rights, did you know that when you're elected to parliament, you don't have to declare your water entitlements. You have to declare your partnerships, your businesses that you've been involved in and everything else. You do not have to declare your water rights. Now, this is absolutely disgusting, and a question I'd like answered would be, well, if you don't have to declare your water rights, uh, average Australians do if they own water, but if you're a politician, you don't, um, how do they go about it when they fill out their best statement, their business activity statement? Do they put that down on their business activity statement? Because if they don't, they are defrauding the ATO, and this really needs to be looked at big time. And uh, everybody that's been involved with water, right down from your presiding members, uh, from the Murray-Darling Basin, 
you know, these politicians who know all about this, the books have got to be open. We need to have a look at their bank accounts because don't forget, they're public servants. They work for us, but for some reason, they think they control us and uh, they're, the, uh, they're the king. Well, I was going to say something there, but I won't. But uh, they, uh, they're controlling everything we do. Well, sorry, that's not right. So we need to open their bank accounts. We know how much money they're on uh, in regards to the Prime Minister, and I'm not, I'm not saying for one minute uh, that uh, he's involved, but I'm just saying what we need to do is open all their bank accounts and um, find out how some of them have become very, very wealthy. And uh, they need to be held to account. They really do. So that's just one issue. Another thing is I went to a global food forum about five years ago in Sydney, and I couldn't believe what this guy said who was on the panel. He was a banker. I won't mention his name. He was a banker and he was actually gloating. He actually said on this panel, he said, I don't own any land. I've bought water for next to nothing and I'm going to make a shitload of money. Well, I could have got up on that panel and wrung his neck, to be quite honest, because I know how hard it is for us farmers to make a living. Do you know here, uh, Tim, in South Australia, we get charged a right to take water levy, whether we use it or not. A right to take a right to take water. We've already bloody well paid for our water when we've bought our properties. When you buy a property in a higher rainfall area, you pay more for that property. And we get charged a right to take water levy, whether we use it or not. Absolutely disgusting, mate. Disgusting. And both Liberal and Labor in South Australia support that. With this uh, 2007 uh, Water uh, Act, uh, which we, we must always uh, remind people that it was under under John Howard and, and Malcolm Turnbull was the, the Water Minister at the time, uh, the, the justification for this, uh, this government takeover of the, the, the water rights was the millennium drought, that this was going to, to lead to... Uh, F uh, farmers not uh, not being greedy with their with their water, but as the expression goes, Australia's uh, Australia's a, a, a land of, of droughts and, and flooding rains. The Millennium Drought uh, broke, but we still changed the fundamental water farmer rights arrangements that we'd had for. All, uh, since Australia was was settled and and the land uh, started to be be worked by the farmers, that's why these water allocation plans have come in, Tim, so they can uh, cut back us mum and dad farmers. I've got bores on my property, and uh, I can't use them for irrigation because I can't get a water allocation plan. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, this there's nothing more hurtful then we've been through drought, as you know, and you've mentioned, uh, seeing my paddocks. My paddocks last May were just dirt. And to think that I couldn't put a sprinkler on, uh, you know, to uh, to get some grass happening uh, to feed my cows. And, and I've been a stud beef, beef breeder now for, for many, many years. Uh, and it takes you a long time to to gain the genetics that you want, that, you know, you've, you've got cows, I've got pole herefords uh, that... Uh, retain their weight, they, they milk well, um, and they rear a decent calf. And, and it takes you many, many years to get that genetics right. And the amount of farmers that have been destroyed uh, and, and watching water go past their properties, mind you, and they can't access it because why? We get back to where it was separated water from land because the reason they can't use it is because the big boys have bought it. And this, is, this, this has to stop, mate. This country is in a huge mess. And if we don't restore water to land, I'm afraid the, um, the mum and dad farmer is going to be a thing of the past. And I mentioned that to somebody today and she said, oh, don't tell me that. And I said, well, I can tell you now, we will be a thing of the past because uh, they don't want the mum and dad farmers. It's all about corporates. And unfortunately, we've got governments on both sides that are just looking after the big boys and this and this has to stop Tim it really has to stop 
Yeah, it's not a a, a team a, a team red or or team blue issue. They're both as bad as each other. When it was finally uh, in the the media cycle, the uh, the the, the uh, the absolute devastation the Murray Darling Basin uh, plan and authority has done to the the farmers. The the worst affected area was uh, uh, southern New South Wales. Despite the fact you had a, a a state Liberal National government, a federal Liberal National government, you in South Australia have a Liberal government. They and uh, uh, they decided they'd look at a few things, have a review, but they haven't made any any substantive decision to uh, 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 to at least look at some sort of reform they it they obviously got a bit freaked out when the uh, the the farmers convoy arrived in canberra at the the end of last year but as soon as they 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 went away they it, it, they just hoped that the issue would go away and then you had the national farmers federation who said that the solution was a a transition for farming families away uh, from agriculture tim you mentioned the national farmers federation our peak bodies are not doing anything uh really for the mum and dad farmers uh they're in the same league as the big corporates they're looking after the big corporates uh which is very very sad um, if I if I can just mention briefly um, a little bit about the Natural Resource Management Act of 2004, which we've been under here in South Australia, uh, non-complying fines 127.6a, non-complying fines for an individual, uh, $35,000 fine, uh, and uh, that's for any minor thing. I had a, a mate that was clearing a bit of silt out of a creek. And this would be going back probably eight years ago now. And um, he got fined $35,000. He actually helped environmental flow because he didn't get a permit. He actually helped environmental flow. And uh, he took the silt out of the creek, put it up on the bank, spread it out. It looked absolutely magnificent. And I took a presiding member uh, uh, of the Natural Resource Management Board uh, to his place. And uh, I said to this guy, I said, what have you done wrong? He had to admit that there was nothing wrong. I got him off that fine, got him off that fine. But what the Labor Party wanted to do is they wanted to make those non-complying fines for an individual from $35,000 to $700,000. If you're a family company, if you're, listen to this one, if you're a family company, it's $70,000. The Labor Party wanted to change that to $2.2 million. Now, people say to me, Why? I said, well, number one, this is socialism at its best. And the NRM monitors the metropolitan area. So in other words, your home. So a $35,000 fine uh, wouldn't sell your house. $700,000 would sell a few houses. $70,000 wouldn't sell, um, sell your farm, sorry. $700,000, uh, which they wanted to make 2.2 million. Uh, you can see where I'm going there. 2.2 million would sell a few farms. Now, on this right to take water levy, whether we use it or not, if this levy is not paid in a certain time, down the bottom, it's got, we can seize your land. Everything that we get from this environmental dictatorship is all intimidation. I had another farmer who was taking, this is only recently, was taking water from a creek. He ran out of water on his property and uh, no water for his sheep. So he's going down to a creek, not on his property, crown land, and he was drawing water and taking it back in uh, thousand litre containers and keeping his sheep alive. And I heard about this, they were gonna take him to court, they wanted to do an interview uh, with no lawyer involved or anything like this, there could have been self-incrimination and uh, I got him a warning, a warning. And this is the sort of caper that's going on all the time. And people can't believe it when I say to them, they don't want the mum and dad farmers. It all comes back to the Lima, Lima Agreement, uh, United Nations Agenda 21, which we know now is Agenda 2130. Uh, it is absolutely disgusting what is going on in this country. And we've got Liberal and Labor that are doing nothing to make things better and uh, to actually help 
the mum and dad farmers of this country. They're doing nothing. Going back to the 2007 Water Act again, that's because uh, uh, Malcolm Turnbull uh, was operating because we know that uh, he's, he's still an adherent to the, the, the climate change religion, that well, this, Tim Flannery was Australian of the, the year, and he said that even the rain that falls isn't going to fill our dams and our, our river systems. So they were operating under that assumption uh, that uh, water r rainfall water was going to be scarce, and this is why uh, the federal government needed to uh, step in. But of course, that was 13 years ago. Now we've had, well, as I mentioned in the expression before, we've had uh, flooding rains and uh, you, you'd, you'd also know uh, quite a bit about my premier here in Victoria, Daniel Andrews, uh, against uh, building new dams because uh, dams uh, don't uh, don't make it rain. No, they don't. But they uh, but new dams can catch more rain. And we, we've had over the past week in in Victoria, it's been bucketing down with rain. New dams could have could have captured that as well. But 13 years later, he still believes in uh, this uh, scarce. Uh, rainfall myth. They're looking absolute idiots, Tim. Absolute idiots. You talk about good old Tim Flannery, good old Timmy baby. Uh, Tim uh, allegedly bought a house on the Hawkesbury River. He told us that uh, the uh, sea level was going to rise as much as eight stories. Uh, Julia Gillard told us about the sea levels rising. Well, Julia Gillard's got a place at South Brighton, right on, just about right on the seafront. You know, if, if this was really going to happen, uh, I'd be heading for the hills. I wouldn't be buying a place right on the seashore or right near a river or anything like this. This is, I just can't believe that people in their 60s and 70s believe this crap. Uh, kids going to school because they've been brainwashed, that's a little bit different. But uh, people out, you know, my age in their 60s and so forth, I can't believe they believe this climate change garbage. It's all about control. We have a look at uh, good old Al Gore. He's another one. Uh, have a look how much uh, electricity he uses in his mansions and all the rest of it, uh, flying around the country. What about little Greta Thunberg? Where's Greta? We've had, this, we've had the coldest start to uh, an April in about 30 years. We've had the wettest start to an April in 20 years. Where in the hell's Greta? I wish she'd come here because, uh, you know, if things are a little bit warmer while we're getting this rain, things grow a little bit better because once it comes in cold, the grass doesn't grow. It really doesn't. Well, Greta, she's not even 18 yet, and she's already uh, doing a, a reinvention tour a la uh, Madonna. Uh, she, she's trying to jump on the uh, 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 coronavirus uh, uh, treatment uh, train by, she's now a spokeswoman for uh, UNICEF to, to help uh, children uh, through the uh, coronavirus pandemic. So, so there you go. There, she's obviously had to uh, adjust to the 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 the, the new uh, uh, global uh, global emergency. Well, Greta needs to have a real look at herself or her parents because uh, she's absolutely made a lot of children um, poo their pants, thinking that the world's going to end because of climate change and bushfires. And I just want to get on to bushfires too, if I can, Tim. Uh, you know, climate change doesn't cause bushfires. What causes bushfires is the odd lightning strike, lunatics, and uh, and an accident. And the reason the reason our bushfires are more severe because over the last fifty years, governments have pandered to the green agenda and planted all this low density bush scrub all over the place. You see it now in your in your cities and your suburbs and everything, and it goes right up to our majestic trees. And uh, so they can push their climate change garbage. I'm all for trees, don't get me wrong. We need to plant them at a sensible distance apart so they can grow to their full potential because we know they're the lungs of the earth. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just wish people would sit back, they've got a brain, and work things out for themselves. Don't believe the garbage that this mainstream media is feeding us. And any anybody the mainstream media is having a crack at they're the people, people want to really look at those people because they're the decent ones. I ran for the Senate under Fraser Anning. I got cut off all media, all media. I've been going on radio for 10 years over here in South Australia. I got cut off everything. 
and uh, you reckon freedom of speech is alive and well in this country? Bunk them. It's not. Yeah, the, the media, they were out for a Fraser since his, his maiden speech in the Senate where he, he mentioned a lot of the things that uh, uh, Flag Australia uh, campaigns on, but they just wanted to focus on that he said the phrase final solution in regards to having an immigration uh, plebiscite. And I know by the time the election came around and uh, his candidates uh, were announced, unless they could uh, uh, dig up dirt on you, they, they, didn't, they, they didn't want to uh, hear about any of his candidates. It's interesting, uh, Tim, uh, um, when I go on radio, I actually ask politicians, anybody, to come on and have a crack at me. Tell me where I'm wrong. They don't come on. They don't tell me where I'm wrong. Because what I'm saying is it's happened. It's happened. And uh, I, I think that um, when we talk about, I just want to go back to, to foreign ownership, and we, we always hear about China, China, China. But, you know, there's 62 other countries that's buying us up and uh, it has to stop, mate. I mean, if if we're talking about food security and I heard Frydenberg the other night talking about, oh, look, you know, we, we can't get uh, back to, to making everything. Well, Josh, as far as I'm concerned, mate, you shouldn't be our treasurer. I said, if you're going to get on national TV and say that we can't make everything again, well, that's the biggest load of baloney I've ever heard. Uh, we can. We used to make everything. But it's our treasonous politicians that have stopped that by these ridiculous agreements and uh, and treaties. We can make anything in this country, and we need to, Tim, because if this ever happens again, like this Chinese virus that come out of Wuhan, um, we're self-sufficient. We don't need to be uh, groveling to China or, or anywhere else. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting if Scott Morrison, or the LNP, <clears throat> excuse me, don't make a huge effort and kickstart our economy by creating jobs and jobs are manufacturing industry and make it easier to grow food. Well, they're not fair dinkum because the debt that we're going to have is massive. And how are we going to pay it back? Because I tell you how we're going to pay it back. They'll raise GST, they'll raise taxes, they'll raise fuel prices, the whole lot. They're going to have to because otherwise they're not creating any jobs. Uh, where people are working, paying taxes, paying more GST and all the rest of it, and that's how we can get ourselves out of the muck. But if they don't kickstart our economy by making vehicles again, washing machines, everything, and you know what? It might be a little bit dearer, but I'm quite prepared to pay a little bit more for something that's going to last and something that's built in Australia, that's creating jobs for Australians, full-time jobs, not jobs three or four hours a week, full-time jobs where these people can actually get a loan to buy a home and bring up their family and feel good about themselves. But if Scott Morrison doesn't do that, as far as I'm concerned, he has let the Australian people down big time. We're sick of the talk. We want to see the war. We want to see actually things happening. And uh, we really need, I tell you what, we need a Trump. Uh, that's what uh, uh, a lot of Australians have uh, been craving well, since uh, uh, Trump burst onto the political scene uh, five years ago. I saw a lot of uh, people in our chat; uh, they're, they're wanting the the next the the next generation uh, Fraser Anning. That's what that's what they're uh, craving. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Australian uh, manuf manufacturing, and even though there, there are uh, still uh, items and consumer goods and, and other, other types of materials manufactured here, a lot of the, the parts for whether it be the, uh, uh, the, uh, those goods themselves or for the machinery, it comes from China, which of course trade uh, has, been, uh, has been interrupted along with people movement because of the, uh, the pandemic. And if you're missing an ingredient, then obviously you, you, can't, you, you can't make the, the good. And I've spoken to quite a number of uh, small business uh, people who, who've said that that is the, the biggest killer there, that they can't get the, the parts, that it may be 
ma uh, made or assembled in Australia. And this brings me to uh, the, uh, uh, when they say on the food labels that, that it's uh, made in Australia from something, something uh, Australian growing ingredients there. And it's totally been exposed now that if we can't, can't get all those ingredients uh, that disrupts our economy uh, uh, as much as the the shutdowns themselves. Yeah, you're correct, Tim. Uh, they've got us by the short and curlies. Um, it's a situation where this is why it's so important that we get back to food security and we get back to uh, manufacturing and get our industry going again. And uh, that way we're not uh, groveling to any country uh, if uh, if this happens again, and uh, I just I just think how bad are our politicians if they don't do this? And uh, it's a situation where it just shows how bad they are. It really does show how bad they are. You know, I I meet with a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people, and uh, you know they're going on about going into recession. I think that's baloney. We're already in a recession. We're going into into a depression. We really are. Um, the jobs are not there. And as I said earlier, you know, you hear somebody getting a job at two hours or three hours a week at all. That's not a job. That's not a job at all. Uh, we want people working 38, 38 hours a week. And do you know what? There's nothing worse than people sitting at home doing nothing. Now, I'm not talking about the Chinese virus. Let's say, let's say we were back to normal uh, and there's going to be that many businesses that uh, will never start up again. Um, it is not good for your mental state to be sitting down and what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So it's most important that we really kickstart the manufacturing and industry. And, and if our agriculture is booming, it has a chain reaction on the whole economy. Where does our economy start? It starts with primary production. And uh, I, I'd, like to, I'd really like to see some uh, politicians locked up to be quite honest, with what they've done to this country. Um, it's it's disgusting. And uh, I've got, as I said, five kids, hard workers. I've got six grandkids. And uh, I want them to have a job. I want them to feel good about themselves and, uh, and future generations. And I just think it's just so sad to think that uh, there's not going to be the jobs out there and uh, it's, it's going to be shocking. Suicides and all the rest of it, uh, terrible, absolutely terrible. I, I feel... I feel for the future of this country. I feel for the future of the world. And uh, we've got to really knock this socialism uh, down big time. And I think I think this Chinese virus has woken a lot of people up, Tim. I really do. And the only way you can wake some people up is really hit their hip pocket. And it's very sad that it comes to that. But I'm getting phone calls now. Uh, and I was mentioning to people about all this water business 10 years ago. I get phone calls now saying, Peter, you were right. And I said, used to say to farmers, be very careful of the divide and conquer. This is what socialism does. So they'll go up and they'll say, hey, Tim, look, keep away from that flag Australia guy. He's a radical. He's a right wing nationalist. He's an extremist and all the rest of it. And yeah, look, I'm all of those, mate. And if that means that all I want to do is have food security in this country uh, and they want to call me that, yep, I'm that. No problems at all. But um, they divide and conquer Peter, they, people. They look after certain ones and not others and turn farmers against farmers. And uh, it is absolutely disgusting. But there's farmers that are waking up now that uh, should have woken up 10 years ago. Uh, I think that uh, uh, far-right uh, extremist uh, label uh, in the, or smear, I should call it, in the, in the current climate uh, doesn't have the same impact uh, that it once did uh, in the in the past, no, you could be you could be right there. And what I say to a lot of the lefties that I meet and everything like that, um, I say to them, "Do you want to eat clean, healthy food grown here in Australia?" Oh, of course we do. And I said, "Well, that's what I'm fighting. That's what I'm fighting." Uh, and I said, "We can't farm without water. Our water's been stolen from stolen from." And oh, how's it been stolen? And then I tell them, and. Uh, but they'll always turn around and tell you, Tim, that it's to do with uh, environmental issues. A uh, load of garbage. You know, when you think the Liberal Party are giving money to fill in dams, mind you, even if you're not using that water out of that dam, Tim, that dam is an ecosystem. It's there for bird life. 
It's there for native animals. And it's there for somebody that buys that property down the track if they want to use that water, if government will let them. Uh, they can use it to protect their lives, their home, their stock, whatever, in the case of major bushfires. To think there's a government paying people money to fill in a dam is disgusting, absolutely disgusting. And I had a word to the NRM years ago about this, um, you know, about they want to fence off our creeks and dams and all the rest of it, at our expense, mind you. I was throwing a little bit of money. I said, why do you want to do this? Oh, because we want pristine water. I said, oh, yeah. Uh, you don't want animal feces going into the waterways. Oh, that's right. I said, well, actual fact, microorganisms feed off animal feces. It's part of the ecology. But by fencing off dams and fencing off creeks, they don't want the poor native animal having a drink either. I mean, it is absolute lunacy what's going on. And don't think for one minute this environmentalism is, in, is about the environment. It is not. It is about total control. It is communism, socialism, Marxism, and whatever other ism is out there, that's what it is. And it's got to stop. And these people have inf infiltrated bureaucracy, councils, state government, federal government, everywhere. And unfortunately, that's what's happened to the uh, Liberal Party. There's too many lefties in there now, and uh, they can't make decisions that, uh, that uh, Sir Robert Menzies, who founded the Liberal Party, was a true conservative, can't make those decisions that would have been made years ago. Uh, it's very, very sad. Uh, we've got a question here on Entropy from Senator Slayer. I agree with you on stopping the, the Chinese communists, but what about the, the bankers? You, you mentioned that uh, uh, banker that you, you came across uh, bragging uh, about his, his, his water rights, and uh, there, there has been the... The, the, the trading commoditization of not just water, but a lot of uh, uh, the agricultural industry as well. So who, who was it that asked the question? Senator Slayer. Who's, who's he or she? Who's... Uh, that's Neil Erickson. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, I, well, in regards to the banker, why, why should anybody... Anybody that doesn't own land, own water. Why? Because we've got, I'll give you an example, Senator. Uh, I know a lady that sold uh, a couple of thousand acres last year and uh, she had uh, water entitlements. The person that bought it said, no, I'm not paying for them, I don't want them. So she is left now, because the water was separated from land, she is left now, she's moved into town, she's getting a lot older, she has left with the bill. She is paying that bill every year. So if water was restored to land, when you sell a property, that water stays with it. And that's the way it used to be, and that's the way it's got to be. Focusing on manufacturing, uh, you're quite right to point out that uh, primary production helps feed manufacturing and uh, South Australia was the home of Holden uh, manufacturing there and over the, the, the past decade, uh, despite uh, the federal government throwing subsidies at uh, to keep Holden plants here, uh, General Motors who own Holden, uh, they uh, phased out uh, the Australian, uh, their Australian manufacturing arm and now they've completely shut down the, the Holden brand now and a lot of it was was to do with and we haven't talked about this the uh, because uh, South Australia uh, some people might have forgotten now was the uh, it, it, it was the home of the the first uh, statewide uh, blackout because of uh, renewable energy <laughs> back in was it, it, it 2017 and has the Oh, I think Victoria is catching up now. The the highest uh, consumer and uh, industrial power prices in the world. And if you if you blow up your coal fired power stations, then uh, what do you expect is going to happen to the the cost of business for everybody? Yeah, correct, correct. I think people are starting to wake up a little bit about. Um, I think Michael Moore, the lefty Michael Moore. I haven't seen his video. I forget what you call it. I've, I've got a, I've got a look at it. Planet of the Humans, it's called. Right. Well, people need to watch that. I haven't as yet, but I'm going to watch it uh, because what gets me in regards to this renewable energy crap, wind turbines and solar panel, 
where does all the ingredients come from to make it? It comes out of the ground. It's called mining. Uh, what happens if we get, you know, two or three weeks of overcast weather and no wind, which quite often we get? So there goes your solar power. There goes your wind. No good. So what's going to happen to, uh, you know, uh, blackouts and all the rest? We're going to have more and more and more. Yeah, we hold the record. That was Jay Weatherall, um, who was the uh, Premier here in South Australia at the time of the Labor Party. Um, the Greens want to hang their hat on that as well. Uh, absolutely disgusting. But getting back to our cars, you know, see you later, Holden. They've gone. Okay. But why couldn't we keep that factory going and uh, still build cars, but make sure that for a start, all government departments drove one of those cars, all bureaucrats drove one of those cars, councillors drove one of those cars. I mean, you imagine the amount of cars that could have come, could come out of a factory if all of our state, federal government, councils, bureaucrats drove a car coming out of that factory. That would be a massive start and uh, we could employ so many people. We really could. Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, going to the, the ingredients of these uh, solar panels and uh, wind uh, turbines, we are mineral rich in Australia, but it's either uh, illegal or not uh, uh, not cost efficient to actually use these minerals and resources for our own benefit. And that's, uh, that's another reason why uh, a lot of it has uh, been shipped over to China to help them uh, prosper and get them uh, more coal-fired power stations and, and other uh, factories here, which is it's in another sense has come back to, to to bite us as well we we shouldn't have these expensive power prices it's not it, it's not that we haven't got the the resources we've just shot ourselves uh in the foot while other nations such as china uh have ha have basically uh been able to supersede us using our own resources well the biggest joke of that is if we talk about you know looking after the environment wouldn't it be far better to uh produce the stuff here, whatever it may be, instead of putting it on a ship and carting it, you know, thousands and thousands of miles or on an aeroplane or, or whatever, would be far better off to build everything here so it would have less of a carbon footprint. Um, uh, look, the trouble is, Tim, we, we've, got, we've got lunatics in government that have got no idea how to do business. We've got lunatics in government that don't care about the people. We've got lunatics in government that haven't got a business brain. Um, if they were to run a business like we have to, I mean, I had my own butcher shop for years. I'm a butcher by trade. Uh, I built spec homes and sold them. I bought properties and done them up and sold them and all the rest of it. I bought a small farm and got a bigger one and sold that and did that up, sold that. Um, I've, I've got life experience. I'm not bragging. Uh, I've done it because I enjoy doing business um, and, and I haven't done much schooling. I, uh, my dad died when I was 12. I'm the last of five boys. And uh, I wanted to get somewhere in life. Uh, I'm not an academic. I hardly read anything. Uh, and I'm not real bright, but I hope I've got a bit of common sense. And that's the trouble with these dirty rotters we've got telling us what to do. They've got no flame in common sense. They don't, don't care about us. And uh, I would, um, as I said, I'd like to open their bank accounts because for what's happening to us, there's got to be some sort of backhanders going on because any decent person would not allow this country to be sold the way it's being sold. Um, and uh, just wouldn't treat the people like we're being treated. We're being treated like mushrooms, fed on BS and kept in the dark, and I think things have got to change. Oh, well, Frydenberg has, has given himself uh, the, the power to, to override the, the Foreign Investment Financial Re Review Board, which, which has just waved through uh, these, uh, 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 the sale of our farmlands to uh, China. And I just want to touch upon, you mentioned the, the bushfires before, and uh, what was uh, revealed uh, 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 when there was actually some proper uh, investigation uh, on uh, the, the cause of the, 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 these bushfires, that it's basically illegal or extremely regulatory prohibitive to fireproof your property. <laughs> Mate, over here in South Australia, uh, our roadsides are an absolute disgusting mess. I've got a fire plan here on my property. 
but I can't enact it fully because the sides of the roads are that full of broken debris, branches, there's signs up to say that do not disturb the soil or vegetation uh, in any way whatsoever because of habitat, because of one little three-legged, one testicle blue-eyed lizard or something like that uh, who's got to crawl up a, a, a piece of bark or whatever. All that happens, mate, is that with the, the amount of crap that's on our roadsides, these little critters are going to be burnt out anyway and more of them. Uh, we need to clean up our roadsides big time. And here in South Australia, if the Liberal Party don't allow us to do it, well, they're no better than Labor. They're really not. Um, so what I'm saying is that uh, we need to clean up our roadsides. We need to stop planting all this scrub over the place, which is causing bigger bushfires. And these so-called, uh, you know, they've got whole tracks of, of uh, native vegetation going through towns and everything. These are just wicks uh, for bushfires to just travel through towns and uh, and burn people out. Um, it's it's not right. It really isn't right. And and one other thing too is very interesting uh, with our mobile phones and landline phones. Before the NBN, uh, if you had a landline phone and uh, the power was cut, you still had your landline phone. You could ring up. But now ever since the NBN, uh, that's gone as well. And quite often my mobile phone, I can't ring out of that for sometimes an hour or two hours. Now, whether they're cutting me off because they don't like what I've got to say or whatever, well, good luck to them. But, you know, we're being controlled with our water. We're being controlled with the Chinese virus. We're being controlled with our communication. Uh, Australians, wake up. You're being controlled. Uh, the NBN is a, another uh, government, federal government uh, nationalisation takeover that's been a disaster as well. But that's a uh, that's a conversation uh, for another show. Well, I want you, uh, Peter, to to continue to keep uh, telling people about because we've got this. Uh, got this opportunity with the uh, the recession or depression the the economic reset we 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 can return to self-sufficiency and make sure that we're never in this situation uh again you're certainly welcome back on on my show and i'll, I'll recommend you to a lot of my uh, alt media colleagues because you have the the solutions uh, I uh, I have interviewed people such as Ron Pike on this show uh, as well. More people need to hear it, and the the pressure needs to increase on the on the politicians uh, because uh, well the public anger has has grown, uh, oh, in some cases boiled over because of this uh, uh, China virus. Uh, but uh, they've still got the the business people and the advisors in their ear, the the politicians. So the the pressure must continue. Can I just say one thing, Tim? Uh, it, it gives me real faith to talk to somebody like yourself, uh, a young person uh, who's got their head around what's going on, and uh, that, that just gives me a little bit of hope because, um, you know, my kids hear it all the time and their, their eyes are wide open for what's going on. But to have somebody like you uh, doing what you're doing, um, I commend you, mate, and I do appreciate you giving me a little bit of time to uh, have this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. And to check out more uh, about Flag Australia, just go to flagaustralia.org. Uh, Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.